transitivity mismatches in mono alleys. Unfortunately, those can't be here, so I'll be presenting on our behalf. And I'm presenting work in progress. Yes? Translation is mine. Okay. And um, <coughs> thanks. Um, and I'm presenting work in progress, so I'll try to keep it short and leave some time for discussion. And some of the central terms are still very much under construction and under discussion. Um, so I'll be presenting um, on Monualu, and there are distinct criteria to distinguish syntactic and morphological transitivity. Syntactic transitivity on the clause level, just looking at whether or not there's an overt syntactic object. And morphological transitivity applying on the level of the verb complex and looking at whether or not there's overt marking of transitivity. And I'll be talking about the verb complex, but um, a little heads up in Monualu, um, it's a constructional distinction between verbal and nonverbal clauses, and the verb complex is more precisely described as a predicate with subject agreement that is sensitive to person, really. But that will make sense a bit later on. And Monualu shows mismatches between those two levels of um, transitivity. So on the one hand, we get morphologically intransitive verbs and syntactically transitive clauses. That's the transitivity discord construction that Anna has described. And Monualu also shows a reversal of that mismatch with morphologically transitive verbs and syntactically intransitive clauses. And originally we thought that might also, we might also be able to identify a third level of transitivity um, where the reciprocal construction is sensitive to possibly semantic transitivity. Um, we now think that might be a bit problematic, and you'll see later on why. Um, so those are sort of the two terms in blue. They are the more problematic ones. All right, let's have a look at Monualu. It's a Northwest Solomonic language, and you'll see it's very aptly labeled as it's spoken on three islands on the very northwest border of the Solomon Islands, just south of Bougainville. And I'll be presenting data I collected on the two islands of the west mostly on the westernmost island, Mono, but also some data from Alu. Um, I haven't visited the third island yet, nor even met a speaker from there, so don't ask me anything about Hauru. <coughs> um, all right, so let's start with the syntactic transitivity. That's fairly straightforward. It applies on the clause level and simply is determined by the absence or presence of an overt syntactic object. In Monualu, that can be a phenomenal object included inside the verb complex or a full object noun phrase outside the verb complex. Uh, there's no um, clearly identifiable noun incorporation in Monualu, um, as you'll see in the examples. And um, it's other than that, fairly straightforward. We get intransitive verbs and intransitive clauses, um, transitive verbs and transitive clauses, then amitransitive verbs, they're the all rounders. They can show up anywhere without special marking. <coughs> and some verbs can be transitivized by the suffix e. So this is very similar to what we find in other oceanic languages. I picked two closely related examples here, but that's, um, that's familiar to many of you, I'm sure. So here we have intransitive verbs and intransitive clauses. Um, they take one argument, and for the purpose of this talk, there's nothing much else exciting happening here. Um, then we get transitive verbs and transitive clauses. So transitive clauses require an overt syntactic object. So that can be a noun phrase as an example three, or an object in clitic as an example four. Um, and you can see that I'm also struggling with the um, dilemma of English bring and take that Anna talked about on Tuesday. And I can add that Mera also expresses accompaniment and is also specific with regard to the theme that's typically um, human, but can be other animates. Um, most frequently it's used like similar to English guide, but uh, you can see here it can also be used to describe events of kidnapping. So um, guide would not be a good gloss either. Then ambitransitive verbs can show up in intransitive clauses without anything special happening, where there's no object expressed at all, so no object in clitic, no object noun phrase. Um, and they don't have to change their form to show up in transitive clauses either. They can show up 
with um, object noun phrases, and you can already see they can precede or follow the noun phrase. And with object enclitics, where the object is expressed inside the verb complex. So that's all very straightforward, and that's all a beautiful transitivity match there. Then there's a lexically, de lexically determined set of verbs that can be transitivized by the suffix e. When they show up in an intransitive clause, a syntactically intransitive clause, they can just show up um, underived, as in these examples, so roro, hata, and hunkoto. Um, you may notice the different spellings for hata and hunkoto on the first and second line. That's because they're underlyingly consonant final and then get realized um, with an echo vowel. And um, how do I know this? Um, it becomes obvious when that transitive suffix attaches. <coughs> so with the transitive suffix, we get a morphologically transitive form. And then we have a pro pronominal object in clitics, so we get syntactically transitive clauses. So that's still a nice transitivity match. And there you can see for Eriha theory in 16 and the Hunko theory in 17 that that final vowel is no longer realized. Um, one thing um, just sort of about the verb complex the as object and clitics do not necessarily attach directly to the transitive suffix. Um, there's up to three positions in between that can be filled. Here you see that with the adverbial tama and male um, in a nice contrast with each other. Um, and so far that's all very matching. Intransitive verbs, intransitive clauses, transitive verbs, transitive clauses, ambitransitive verbs can do anything, and some verbs require the transitive suffix to occur in transitive clauses. Um, but we also get a transitivity discord, that's sort of the first type of mismatch, where morphologically intransitive verbs occur in syntactically transitive clauses when the object is expressed as a full noun phrase. Um, so we get these for those verbs that um, take the transitive suffix e. Um, so that may be just a bare noun as in 20, but those can also be noun phrases including um, possessors. I also get that with modifiers and numerals. Um, and again, you can see that um, the object noun phrase can proceed or follow the verb complex. Um, so that's all very typically oceanic, what we've seen very much um, in, in some other languages. Um, so that's not all that fancy yet about Monualu. Um, and I don't think that's noun incorporation um, because we can get object noun phrases before and after the verb. We get complex noun phrases. Um, objects may be definite, they may be specific. Um, so this discord construction is very similar um, to what we see elsewhere. And uh, like Anna described for saliba, it is more common for generic or expected or non-individuated objects to occur in this discord construction. But whenever I think I figured out the pattern, mm -hmm. I come across a few counter examples. Um, so that's a tendency and there's no rule really. Okay, so that's all still very typically oceanic. And then when we look at monoalu reciprocals, um, they're derived by the prefix hang. And there we get a reversal of the mismatch, um, where we have morphologically transitive verb forms in syntactically intransitive clauses. Now reciprocal or prototypical reciprocal events are a bit special um, because the set of subject reference and object reference are identical. Um, and everybody, every participant in the event fulfills more than one semantic role. And Monualu is uh, fairly sensitive to this um, so that we get those morphologically transitive verbs. The morphology reflects that the event is semantically transitive, but it has to occur in a syntactically intransitive clause, um, reflecting that each participant fulfills more than one semantic role and occurs as agent and patient or experiencer and stimulus at the same time. And in Monualu, we cannot have the object and subject co-reference. We also see this in the reflexive construction um, where they can not those two cannot be identical, there's no dedicated marker, and with a restriction on non-identity, the language then reverts to body part expressions for reflexives. Okay, so these reciprocals have to occur in syntactically intransitive clauses, 
So the MV transit is the tower here in a, a non-reciprocal pose, um, occurs with an object in clitic, but then in 24, it occurs with the reciprocal prefix hung, there's no longer an object in clitic realized, and indeed that would be ungrammatical. The fact that um, tau tower is reduplicated as correctional um, is optional here, so that doesn't really play into it either. Um, with an ambitransitive or transitive verb, you can't find any mismatch yet because you can't, there is no speci special marking, morphological marking on the verb of transitivity. But when we look at verbs that take the transitive suffix, we see that they have to be morphologically transitive um, when they occur in the reciprocal construction. So then looking at those um, same three verbs again, we get taura hondo, hando roi male with the reciprocal prefix and the transitive suffix, but no object in clitic realized and no object noun phrase realized either. And indeed that's not possible. Same for iri hang hati and elua iri hang kotima. So here we have a reverse mismatch in the transitivity where we have morphologically transitive verbs in a syntactically intransitive pose. And quite like this, I haven't found that yet in any other languages. Let me know if you do. Um, the closest I found was in Tapapana, where the clause is typically syntactically intransitive and the verb form is transitive with a transitive suffix. But there it looks like the reciprocal and reflexive are formally marked in the same way. And under certain conditions, um, object noun phrase can be realized for emphasis. Um, Slightly similar in Longu, it seems that in reciprocal constructions the, there's optional applicative marking and um, that comes with a note that it's the only construction where the applicative marker can occur without an object suffix. Um, so that's a bit similar, but there it's um, applicativized and also that applicative marking seems optional. Um, so again, if you are aware of anything similar, let me know. Um, and then this is where there's sort of um, a further sensitivity in the reciprocal construction. If we have intransitive verbs like kanguru, which um, has to be applicativized to occur in a transitive clause, what happens there when we use that in a reciprocal clause? Um, it cannot take, it cannot be transitivized by the suffix e, but the reciprocal construction really requires a morphologically transitive verb in Nuona. So then, we get applicative marking with I, and then we get O Eloa Eri Hanka Uruai Ita. I is one of three applicative markers in Monoaru, and it's a bit the odd one out. It um, occupies a different position following the position of object and clitics in the verb complex. Um, and functionally, it's also a bit quirky. Um, I suspect it's related to the old um, locative marker that doesn't really really survive anywhere else in Monualu except in proper place names like Maleai and Gaumai and such. Um, and we also find this with, um, not with verbs, but when we get nouns inside the verb complex in reciprocal, describing reciprocal events. Um, so this is where I said, I'm happy to talk about the verb complex, but that's not entirely correct in Monualu because you can get not just nouns, but also noun phrases as semantic aid of the verb complex without any verb in the clause. Um, since there's a subject agreement sensitive to person, I would still classify that as a verbal clause. It's a constructual distinction rather than be just based on word class or a prototypical discourse function of the um, lexical item. And here again, we get the applicative marker um, what's a bit problematic with sort of talking about semantic transitivity here, you see with these two verbs, uh, nouns, that they both express relationship. I cannot be an enemy on my own and I cannot be a twin on my own either. Um, so that might just be rather a sensitivity to sort of verb class and then nouns just get thrown into um, the verb class of intransitive verbs when they require that sort of classification. Um, Yes. All right. So, sort of just looking at 
saying we were just basing this on group classification. We then get transitive and ambitransitive groups without any morphological marking or reciprocal causes. Um, groups that can be transitivized by the suffix E have to occur in their morphologically transitive form in reciprocal causes. And then intransitive verbs in nouns being grouped with intransitive verbs are applicativized by I. <coughs> um, if you really wanted to sort of insist on different levels of transitivity, it does at least give you that neat pattern that you see in the table there. Um, but as I said, I think that's a bit problematic. Um, but you still get that reverse mish mismatch that Monoalu with reciprocal construction insists on a morphologically intransitive verb and a syntactically, a uh, morphologically transitive verb and a syntactically intransitive clause. And indeed in Mono there is a patient reciprocal construction um, that also uses the reciprocal marker hang but has a different function. Um, and those are transitive clauses and then you get um, the standard applicative marker there. But those, that's a different construction that's more, um, so with hearty that we've seen, smooth um, is a good example. Then you, if, you, if I'm sort of moving two things apart from each other, um, then I can use that. Um, also, that's really the easiest example. It's, it's a bit more complex, but that's not really relevant for this talk at this moment. Um, all right, so to sum this all up, we have two types of transitivity mismatch in Monualu, the fairly common transitivity discourse, constru uh, discourse construction with morphologically intransitive verbs and syntactically transitive clauses when the object is expressed as a noun phrase. In the reciprocal, we also get morphologically transitive verb forms and syntactically intransitive clauses, so a reverse of the mismatch. And the reciprocal um, is also sensitive to um, transitivity of the verb or noun um, in that you get different marking, sort of a different form of derivation. You get to derive a de morphologically transitive verb form depending on whether the verb is transitivizable or is truly intransitive or noun. So um, where we've seen um, the transitive verb discord in many languages, I'm still looking for other examples of a reverse of this transitivity mismatch in other languages. So let me know everything you can think of, please. Thank you. I have a whole bunch of questions and comments. I thought things really exciting. Um, maybe first of all, um, you ask whether there are other examples of this mismatch. You know, the mismatch is obviously sorry. The the mismatch that we haven't seen a lot in Oceanic, yeah. So the discourse the other yeah. discord the other way around. Um, since it is restricted to reciprocals. Um, it would make sense to look at the reciprocal literature, which you probably have already. Well, the question is, are there any languages that allow the object to be lexically expressed? You know, they are shaving each other, is they is the subject. Um, so you want languages either with case marking or languages which have the subject and the object not both before the verb. Mm -hmm. uh, can you do that in other languages at all? So you, you may already have this as a cross-linguistic normal pattern that it's always the subject that is lexically expressed and never the object yes. in terms of lexical noun phrases. So in that sense, it may fit exactly a pattern that, that may already be described. It's just that the morphology uh, works differently. Uh, and, and a <coughs> comment on this morphological and syntactic marking of transitivity. Um, this is based on saliva object markers being suffixes. Mm -hmm. um, what you find is that there are clitics, so that moves them into the syntactic realm, and they classify as marking syntactic transitivity status, while in Saliba they would count as the morphological mm -hmm. stuff. So another way of, of skinning this cat or looking at this that would probably give a very different pattern is say, never mind morphology and syntax, but say inside and outside the verbal complex, in which case your clitics are inside the verbal complex. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Always? Okay. Yes. So the clitics are inside the verbal complex. Lexical nouns and free pronouns are presumably outside, yes. unless you have 
you know, some examples with incorporation that might be a different... No, they have to be outside. Okay, yeah. so then it would be interesting what the pattern looks like then. That you could just kind of add that to your table as saying if we don't say morphology but and syntax, but inside and outside the verbal complex, yes. what patterns do we find then? Yes. Just as an additional view of the data. Yes. Thank you. Um, in that case, if, if I did that... Um, I think you still have the mismatch, the interesting one. Yes. I don't think it goes away, yes. uh, which is interesting. Yes. Um, because I would still want to analyze this as syntactically uh, and morphologically um, transitive here, even though the object is expressed inside the verb complex. Yep. Right? Um, um, so as I said, in Papapana, under certain conditions, objects can, object noun phrases can be expressed in the reciprocal um, for emphasis only, though. Okay. And that is only possible with either an emphatic marker, I think it's Tobi, or with um, a serial verb construction that includes um, the verb for return as a V2 in the verb complex. Mm. Um, in, in Algonquian languages, um, there seems to be a similar thing where, so those are marked for animacy of the subject in intransitive clauses. So you get inanimate subject, intransitive, animate subject, transitive. And then you can also, or, uh, so basically animacy of the absolutive argument and transitivity. And then in reciprocal clauses, you get um, sort of one marker for the reciprocal and then something that says animate intransitive, so animate subject. So there you get a bit of a mismatch, um, and there apparently there's, uh, we can have a look. You, you get a bunch of mismatch constructions there, but it's, it, it's just because the language is just so different formally mm. um, that it's a, just a different kind of mismatch and you miss that syntactic transitivity layer a little bit. Yeah, there. yeah. I think you need languages ideally that have case marking, because I mean, what language would actually say, the people, the people shaved each other. You know, if yes. there's no marking on the noun, you certainly don't want to repeat the noun. But if you have the option of, you know, to have the subject and object yes. lexically expressed, yes. who would be stupid yes. enough to do that? But, but if you could choose just the object, in most oceanic languages that don't have case marking, you wouldn't be able to say the, the, the lexical noun phrase is the object because it's not marked. Yes unless you have one that where the position is yeah. different. So, so case marking yeah. would be great. Yes. Or looking at sort of under what conditions does the object have to be expressed in the verb complex. So in Sudest, there was a reciprocal example where the object was still expressed. It was for yeah. humans. Yeah. Um, mm. So mm. something like that. In Mono, um, often you can't really tell whether or not there's an object in Kotik because in most constructions it's zero mm -hmm. for third singular and everything non-human is generally treated as singular. Yeah. Um, that's why there's so much, so many imperfective constructions because that's one case where you have to get an overt third singular object marker. Mm -hmm.